Hey, deserving listeners, love is blind. Let's check it out. What's the first thing you notice about me? Hey. <laughs> you know, I ran towards you like a freaking T-Rex. I'll keep it PG. What? What was it? I'll keep it PG. Okay. Oh, all right. Yeah, you had pretty teeth. Yeah. Not like Thanks. big, big teeth, but like you have mm-hmm. like ideal teeth. So he either decided to veer away from the rated R answer that he was wanting to say, the honest answer, and he is saying, I also really loved your teeth, which is an interesting thing to, you know, each to their own. And, or he is using teeth as a euphemism, a PG euphemism for something else. If he had a rated R thought and he, you know, your, your frontal, <laughs> so we could imagine, I suppose what, well, I don't, I, I guess there's a few options. <laughs> so, some people think it's a disc, but you have like big square white teeth. Okay. Uh, that'd be a weird way to say that euphemistically. <laughs> you have big square white, uh, <laughs> insert rated R noun there. So he's literally talking about the teeth. And <laughs> he said he, he said he wanted to keep it. PG. So he's not talking about. He, so off camera, he'll say other things. But still, what she's asking for is not only is she, you know she's curious. What did you first notice about me? But she's also in her way, which is totally normal and uh, and healthy for her to bid for reassurance. Yeah, it's it's totally normal, even though he has already reassured her a number of times that he's attracted to her and thinks that she's beautiful. By the way, they had a a little mini conversation about Jessica, and he said that he had a bone to pick with her. He wasn't hostile, but he's like, yeah, by the way, I have a bone to pick with you. And he said, when I told you that I loved you, I, I don't know what he said. I think he said something like, I didn't expect you to tell everyone. Or he said, I, I told you not to tell anybody or to tell Jessica or whatever. And he says, "And but I heard f- that you just yelled it when you entered the lounge. I'm being more hostile as I'm wording it. He was much more light about it. And she's like, no, 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 uh, that did not happen. And she, she's like, who told you that? Who told you that? And he says, well, Jessica came in the next time I saw her and I was being nice and I didn't tell her anything yet. And then she just laid into me because she knew that I had already committed to you. And so I have a bone to pick. And she's like, what, what? And it's interesting that she didn't even know that Jessica had found out. So that means that like all those other women, including Laura, didn't tell Chelsea that they had told Jessica. It's so weird, so so middle school. I mean, it's the very least if you're Laura, you know, that whole thing was so odd. And then to uh, not return to Chelsea and go, by the way, I told Jessica, it's so behind someone's back. It's complete. What if Chelsea took issue with that? Like, hey, Laura, what did you, I was telling you, and I had forgotten because she says, I whispered it to Laura. I thought she had whispered it maybe to someone else and Laura overheard, but she was confiding in Laura. And from my memory, Laura was prying it out of Chelsea. Chelsea was just like, you know, you know, I, I, I can't say anything. And Laura's like, what happened? What happened? You know, whispering because just because just goes over there with her friends. What, what happened? What happened? And then Chelsea's like, she, you know, he told me he loved me. And then Laura. So I don't know. It's just one set of behaviors in a very stressful time. It was out of altruism for Jessica. It's fine. But it, it's particular, <laughs> every detail. Anyway, so Chelsea says, no, no, no. I, I whispered it to Laura, and then we saw Chelsea leave the room. I think that's the bathroom is in the back, I think. And then uh, she didn't know that Laura told Jessica. She tells that to Jimmy, and after a bit of back and forth, Jimmy very confidently and convincingly told Chelsea, I believe you. He's like, oh, okay, yeah, I believe you. That's really good. That shows... They're able to trust because Jimmy doesn't have a huge reason to trust Chelsea on that. There's not a lot of history there.
But the fact that Jimmy so easily trusted and that Chelsea was forthcoming and didn't get insulted, you know, didn't say like, how dare you accuse me of that? Or, you know, we've seen that kind of behavior on the show before. So it shows a resilience and a differentiation and a a lack of triggering, at least in those situations. But anyway, so at this moment, she's asking, and I can use this as a jumping off point. In all likelihood, you, in many of your relationships, whether it's your spouse, your partner, your soulmate, or it's your friend, your best friend, or your parents, or your cousin, or your boss, or your coworker, we need a lot of reassurance. We need to be told that we are okay, lovable, likable, attractive, a a good worker if it's at work, that kind of thing. And most of the time in our culture, I don't know about every culture, but in our culture, we deny that because it's seen as needy or childish or weak, and it is not. (laughs) It's normal to wonder, especially when there are little question marks. Like at work, if you just finished a big project, and although there's no indication that people are, like your boss is disproving, uh, disapproving of what you did, you're, you're just wondering, am I, are, do you appreciate me? And in my experience, a lot of the reason why people will quit a job has nothing to do with pay or the work and has everything to do with appreciation. A friend of mine just went through this. Um, we would talk a lot. Being a therapist, you end up... <laughs> hearing a lot of people's ongoing problems, and which is great. And, you know, I, I actually would prefer that because I want to be there for my friends, and I don't like to have small talky conversations. I, I've always been that way. Like in college or even high school, um, I was known for going to a party or something and within a couple minutes getting into like some very deep conversations with people because I just hate small talk stuff. Anyway, I mean, deep, deep for a 16 year old, whatever that is, it probably isn't very, it's probably quite cringy to think about what I was talking about. But so he, he was telling me about how he's you know pretty dissatisfied with the job, you know, and he's thinking about leaving. He's been there for a long time. And when I asked him about well, what are the other options? You know, because he's in a kind of a narrow career skill set, and and I thought, well, so at another job, because he was complaining about pay and being overworked, and I said, okay, totally, and you know, we talked about that. And but after a while, as he was really thinking about leaving, I was like, so do you? Will you get paid more at another position? Do you think, or the, will the work be more palatable? And he said, no, it'd actually probably be worse. Pay would probably be less. Work probably be more. And then I'm thinking, well. It sucks that you have a job that's aggravating you, but why? If why would you leave? <laughs> it was because, and you know, long story short, my conclusion. I think I said this to him, and I think he agreed that the foundation of everything was he just felt underappreciated. He felt like the it was like a, a mom and pop owner of the business, and he just felt like they just didn't appreciate him enough and undervalued him emotionally. And he has his own traumas, you know, a lot of relational traumas growing up that are kind of related to that. And we talked about that too. And, you know, I'm not saying he made a, and he did eventually leave. I'm not saying he made a bad choice, but I'm saying this because we all deserve to get that. And if you have people in your life, which I'm sure you do, in all likelihood, they are wanting you to appreciate them or compliment them or love them or reassure them, and they're too afraid to ask. So you could just jump the gun and give that out. There's not enough of that. So maybe if you want, you can pause the video and jot down three people in your life that you can say three things to that you don't know if they want that, but maybe you do because they might have asked for it before. And then you can give that to them. You can text them right now. You can email them right now. You can turn to them if they're on the couch right next to you. Especially you couples. <laughs> Pause it. <laughs> turn to each other. And, you know, say something Say something nice. I, I can feel the love already happening right now. <laughs> I always love hearing about couples that watch these videos because it just shows that 
you value attachment and self-awareness and connection and love and communication and uh, growing, you know, furthering your, your growing. So it warms my heart. Anyway, so she's asking for reassurance. And he <laughs> is saying that she lies, but, you know, has, has big white square teeth, which I don't think is, is going to reassure her very much. You know, maybe he'll divert or he'll make up for it later. But even if it was, she's looking for, you know, your eyes, your face, your radiance, something along those lines. Uh, but he's being honest and he's expressing himself. <laughs> and he also said that people consider it a diss, which means he has said this presumably to other women. So it's a thing of his, which is totally fine. He really likes big, square, white teeth. Hmm. Yeah. Does she have big, square, white teeth? Does Megan Fox have big, square, white teeth? I noticed Modern your display. eyes. That was a cute answer. Okay, so she says, I noticed your eyes. And then she says, yeah, that's a cute answer. <laughs> oh. What, what oh, was it? <laughs> <laughs> I mean... <laughs> yeah, big boobs. Yeah, yeah. I I figured. Uh, well, right. Yeah. Okay. I think he's a very religious fellow, right? Did he talk about that? Uh, I don't know if he talked about it, but there's a moment where Trevor, because Trevor and Jimmy were both vying for Chelsea, and Trevor was being super cool about like, hey. And by the way, Trevor was super cool about being dumped by Chelsea. At first, I was wondering, well, maybe Trevor wasn't really into Chelsea, but he, I think he really was. He, you know, he took it like a champ. You know, he's sad, and he tried to play the card of like, do you want to be with him because he just asked you first? <laughs> that whole thing. But you know, he seemed like a like a good enough guy, good enough, a good person in terms of what we saw. Anyway, so Trevor is saying that Jimmy is like, hey, you know, uh, I like you. You know, he's not doing the Jessica Chelsea thing. Or I don't know if Jessica and Chelsea were doing it, but a lot of the other people, you know, were considering them to be rivals or something. And Trevor was reaching out to Jimmy. And Jimmy was mainly kind of and was responding well to it, but it wasn't really driven by Jimmy. It was more driven by, by Trevor. And at some point, Jimmy put a Bible in front of, and it looked like one of those Bibles that is his trusted Bible, because it had a lot of inserts that are kind of shoved in there, a used Bible, if you will, you know, one that's been flipped through a lot, and he put it in front of Trevor. So, uh, yeah, a lot of people are religious, but it does, I think, kind of say something about maybe how religious or how he might see the world. But anyway, so he's trying to keep it PG, and I'm thinking, well, Tell her it's, you're you're together now. You can say those things. It's it's all. But is it? Because they're not anyway. All right. Well, that does it for that episode of Psychology in Seattle. Everyone out there, please take care of yourself because you deserve it. You really, really do.